Nobody wants to get united. Like, what we got to do is meet everybody in 149th Street at the bench. Ladies and gentlemen, today, uh, I have, I have, I have a misconception. I have a lie. We've all been lied to. Oh, uh -huh, my gosh. Now, if I were to ask you guys what the primary colors are, what would you say? <laughs> if you said yellow, blue, and red, you'd be wrong. You're lied to just like I've been. And you know what? <laughs> my logo is the old false primary colors. I made my YouTube a long time ago, right? Leave me alone. Now, before going further, I gotta let you guys know, I actually made a different video on color theory that goes over the foundation as to how color works and how we see color and the three different properties of color. I highly recommend watching that video before this one because it lays a good foundation to understanding the three different properties of color. So now that we got that out the way, we can talk more about this misconception, this lie that we've all been fed. The real primary colors are cyan, magenta, and yellow. Who would have thought? Before anybody says, oh, these are just different colors of red and that's just a different kind of blue. You No, no, no. You clearly need this video because you do not understand how color works. Because if that was just a different kind of red and a different kind of blue, why can I mix cyan with magenta to make blue? That's not how that works. If it was just a different kind of blue and a different kind of red, it would make a different kind of purple. But that's not what happens. Now that we went ahead and squashed that misinformation, which mind you, I'm not happy about and I know I'm not changing my logo, it's gonna stay the old primary colors because I like the way they look more than cyan, magenta, and yellow. But colors come in two major varieties and these are going to be subtractive colors and additive colors. What's that, you ask? Well, additive colors are when light beams down. This happens with stuff like your cell phone, you know, your computer, your TV. Those are additive colors. And additive colors have their own primary colors, which is red, blue, and green. But subtractive colors work a little bit differently. Subtractive colors are when light beams down, hits an object, and then the object goes ahead and absorbs all of the colors except for what you see. So, example time. I have a bunch of light bulbs on in my room. These light bulbs are shining light onto me and my skin, my beautiful skin is absorbing all of the colors and just giving you the, the luscious, caramelish, milk chocolate brown that you see in front of you. That's subtractive color. Now, how does this relate to our artwork? I know you guys are like, get to the, get to the point, John. This relates to our artwork because it allows us in order to get more vibrant colors. It allows us to avoid more muddy colors because understanding how colors relate to one another and how they interact with one another is extremely extremely important for art. So when your art teacher is giving you an assignment and she's like, oh yeah, you, you got an F because your colors are muddy, it's probably because you're using these primary colors instead of cyan, magenta, and yellow. If you use cyan, magenta, and yellow, you'll notice you can easily mix colors or you can easily compose an image that combines these colors in a much more cohesive way in order to give you a much more vibrant, much more lively image. Now, vibrance isn't the only benefit we get from this though. You can also more effectively desaturate your colors as well because after all that's the whole point of colors right is to bring life to your image to give atmosphere to your image whether that atmosphere is loud or whether it's super desaturated is up to you but it's within understanding these primary colors and how they interact that we can get the desaturated or the more saturated that we're looking for. If you're able to, if you can, you can use an alcohol-based marker, you can use actual paints if you have them. Grab yourself a blue and a yellow marker, and then grab yourself a cyan and the same yellow marker. Try to make sure they're as close to true cyan, true yellow and true blue as you possibly can, so that this can work properly. If you mix the blue and the yellow, you'll get like a muddy green, you'll get a darker green if you mix blue and yellow. But if you mix cyan and yellow, you'll get a much more vibrant, true green. This right here is evidence enough. Because when two subtractive colors mix, they subtract another color. Which this is actually why we don't get a pure green when we mix blue and yellow. If you guys have studied mixing paint, you might have heard of a term graying a color. And that's when you go ahead and you mix the opposite colors on the color wheel in order to get gray. And this is oftentimes used in order to get a darker value, which is going to be important to the point I'm making. So, if you believe that these are the primary colors right here, then you would mix yellow and blue in order to get green. But as we just discovered with the cyan, magenta, and yellow color wheel, we learned that yellow absorbs blue light. So when you go ahead and you mix yellow into blue to make green, some of the yellow color is actually absorbing and stripping away and subtracting the color blue, which effectively darkens the color because of the technique graying your colors, giving you a darker green. As opposed to mixing cyan and yellow, where the yellow is not sapping out and darkening the cyan 
giving you a nice pure vibrant green. Ladies and gentlemen, this is how colors work together. This is how colors function. It's important we learn this for our art so we can better mix and we can better combine colors in our images in order to create a more cohesive and balanced piece. In order to go ahead and create an image that either pops out a lot or pops out less. This is why it's important to understand that cyan, magenta, and yellow are the true primary colors for artists. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, let me know in the comments down below. And also be sure to hit the like button on this video. It helps out a ton. You won't believe how much I actually genuinely appreciate it. As always, if you leave a comment, I'll do my best to respond. I try to respond to almost everything. If you look in there, I probably already left a ton of comments. Don't forget, today's video is part of an informational playlist and be sure to watch all of it so that you can go ahead and learn more about art and graffiti. And for those guys who are first time viewers, feel free to subscribe. We come up with informational graffiti videos on a consistent basis. And for those guys who are more into the fine art, feel free to follow me over on Twitch. I got a link in my description. I got something for everybody. You can't run away from me. I got entertainment for you just waiting. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, thank you guys tremendously for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next one, but until then, peace.